Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest updates from the front line. Starting out in the Kremenda front, we see here that the Russian forces have started attacking in the direction of the river line here between Kremenda and Leman. So they are attacking here to the west of Yenipopivka, as well as in the center where they have this large ship trying to advance into Tvorske and Yakolivka. And then here to the south in the direction of Dubrova, as well as in the Kremenaya forest area. So the Russian forces are here attempting to advance on the front line here next to Kremina, either to attack and reach this river line here and take control over the forest area to further secure the defense of Kremina, or actually to do some shaping operations for preparation of an offensive in the direction of Liman, or maybe both, a mix of the two. But essentially that is what we're seeing right now in combination with the Ukrainian forces launching some uh, attacks of their own here in the forest area, trying to uh, prevent the Russian forces from advancing as well as sending forces in to hold the line in the Serebryansky forest area. As for further south in the direction of uh, Stoledar, the Russian forces are here attacking in the direction of Spirne as well as in the southern parts of Solodar in the direction of Orihova Vesilivka. The Russian forces are here attacking the Ukrainian forces, trying to recapture some of the high grounds here next to Orihova Vesilivka that the Ukrainian forces recently recaptured and is generally located here between the grain zone of the two forces. As for the northern parts of Solodar, the Ukrainian forces are here launching attacks in the direction of uh, the area between Vesela and Rostolivka, as well as from Vesyukivka in the direction of Solodar as well as a bit further south, so both to the west and south of Vesilivka, as well as to the north and east of the area. So the Ukrainian forces are here attempting to attack in the direction of Solodar from the northern area. There's also some movement of troops in the direction of Selezhnyansky on the Ukrainian side, attempting to prepare for an assault on the village. If the Ukrainian forces manage to capture Selesnyansky, they'll be able to advance here by the highway, allowing them to go around Berhivka and threatening both the Vesilivka and Berhivka by flanking these two positions. So we're seeing the Ukrainian forces shaping the battlefield here in preparation for a possible offensive on the northern flank of Bakhmut in the direction of Soledad, as well as to the northwest of the city. Now, returning to the Serebryansky forest area, we see that the Russian forces managed to advance a small part here to the east of the forest area, where they've managed to capture this road between the north and the southern parts, as well as move a bit to the west. So the Russian forces are here attempting to gain control over the road, which would allow them to transport the troops between the northern and southern parts, as well as prepare for a push westwards through the road here to the north, allowing them to then cut off multiple roads moving southwards and essentially getting a better position. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians are holding on to these western roads and they have to hold back the Russian forces at the intersections to prevent the Russian forces from advancing in these areas, which would essentially cut off the forces here in the southern parts. But then again, most of the forces here are most likely infantry, so they wouldn't really need any of these roads. So just need to have some outposts that receive supplies uh, runningly, and then they can just return to these outposts and then return to the front as they go by. As for the south of Marinka, we have seen the Russian forces advance in the past couple of days, and now they have started moving again. They have attacked and managed to capture the final parts of these fortifications here to the south of Marinka, and are trying to push and gain control over the road that moves from uh, Marinka and down south to Novomikhailivka. So this indicates that the Russian forces are attempting to advance in this part, try to cross through the Ukrainian defenses, and advance in the direction of Novomikhailivka. Now we move on to the Dnieper River area as here in the Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. The level of water by the Dnieper River has significantly decreased and that is due to the breach of the dam by Novokarovka. So essentially this whole river line area has significantly reduced the amount of water within them. As we can see with these video and pictures here from the satellite imagery as well as uh, people on the ground taking some photos and images 
as well as videos, we can see that some parts it's just completely dry, there's no water, and other parts it's just decreased. So what does this actually mean? And this is going to be one of the few times that I use the card, I don't know. Why don't I don't know? Because there are two parts we have to consider. First is the parts that still have water, you still need to cross those. The second part is the areas to where there is no water. And that's very interesting because I'm not exactly sure how this earth is. According to some, you can just walk on it. According to others, it will be like quicksand. You essentially can't move through it. And if that is the second option, then it will be very difficult for anyone to cross through uh, the river line. And if it's the first option, then it would be much easier to cross through. According to which one it is, it could be beneficial to either side. But essentially, if it is the second option, the quicksand option, we will have no opportunity to see any units cross over as there's no one who can just cross through the large amounts of quicksand areas. It would be much easier to just use uh, speedboats to cross the river line. Now, moving on, we have these three videos. The first one is of an American MRAP being towed by a Russian tank. So this is very interesting because we now see that the Russian forces have actually been capturing some of these equipments. I'm looking forward to the day where we actually see leopard tanks and that it's going to be evidence, not just all talk like they're doing right now, claiming that they have or haven't claimed uh, captured one. I'll believe it when I see it. And this is one of the few things where I'll believe it when I see it because there's no reason for them not to show any pictures or videos of them capturing uh, vehicles. Then we move on to this next video, which is an assault of Ukrainian forces. It's an armored column uh, assaulting your Russian trench lines and positions. So this is very interesting because we see a lot of these uh, units being used in different ways. We see now based on this, that it's most likely they have passed through the minefields, which is why they can separate like they're doing right here, which makes it much easier for them to avoid a lot of casualties, unlike doing the straight columns where essentially they just cut off completely and are unable to move. Then we have this second one, it is a much longer video, so I'll just take a part of it. But essentially we see some uh, Ukrainian vehicles advancing, they get hit by artillery, just like usual. And that is essentially what we're seeing. Then there's a Russian tank on the other side of the forest line. So this forest line actually acts as a shield for both sides, as they will be very difficult for them to see through it. So essentially they're relying on these drones to know where to shoot at so that they are able to shoot the opponent while being staying hidden. So whoever has the drones available will be able to tell where the opponent is and as such be able to hit accurately while staying hidden across the forest line. All in all, what we are seeing so far is that in the Saporizhia front itself, Things are slowing down slightly as the Ukrainian forces have reduced their activity. The Russian forces are have hardly counterattacking in this part. They're just trying to establish and protect their front line. Although we do see some Russian activity in this Vatova Kremina area as they are trying to advance and attack on this part of the front line. And it makes a lot of sense due to the units being placed here being mainly armored and mechanized in comparison to Russian units in the Saporizhia front are mainly infantry and motorized, which corresponds with their current objectives. And that is all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.